I was super excited to get this and check it out. JetKVM allows you to control a computer remotely, is dead simple to set up, and a great addition to your home lab. Let's take a look. So while you watch me unbox this, let me tell you a little bit about JetKVM. Imagine you have a computer that doesn't have a keyboard, mouse, and screen, and it is in a hard to reach location. Maybe it's sitting in your basement, or in my case, in a closet. Anytime you want to install an OS or access the BIOS, it's a pain. You're gonna to have to drag hardware from wherever you keep it, set it up in that tight little space, and this is where Jack KVM comes in. Alternatively, maybe you have a headless machine running, say Proxmox, TrueNAS, or whatever your favorite server OS is, and you need to get to the console because the web interface isn't working. This is where Jack KVM is the answer. So in short, Jack KVM connects your to your computer's USB port and HDMI port, and then makes the display available over a web interface, allowing you to interact with the machine as if you were sitting in front of it, huddled in your closet. Uh, it can even do more, but we'll get to that in a minute. The Jet KVM device is small and, you know, it's tough to tell from these videos, but it's quite sturdy, sturdy and solid feeling. It has some weight to it. On the back, there are the basic ports you will need, including HDMI, network, USB-C, and an accessory port. Up front, there's a nice touch screen that shows the IP of the device and basic application you can page through and access settings. In the box, other than this, great little device, a couple uh, USB cables, an HDMI adapter, that's it, it's dead simple. Installation is just as easy. Connect the USB and HDMI to the computer you wanna control, add a network connection, and you are all set. The Jet KVM will boot up, show its IP address, which you can then access in a web browser. I'll show you that in one second, but first I want to mention that I tried this with a couple different machines and I tried it with both uh, an HDMI machine, sorry, a machine with an HDMI interface, kind of the standard today, but I also tried it with an old server I had that only has VGA interface. And so what I did is I grabbed one of these VGMA, VGA to HDMI adapters and it worked perfectly. I'm going to show you that running in just a second. So with that kind of intro out of the way, let's jump over and take a look at the Jet KVM interface and I'll show you how it works. All right, now that you've seen what the unboxing of a Jet KVM looks like and learned a little bit about it, let me show you what installing a brand new one looks like. So I went through that very simple installation and I should have one over here at, let's see if I remember the IP, and it was 240, I was wrong. And here's what you see with a, a brand new Jack KVM that you get out of the box. I have not configured this one yet. So I'll take you through the setup experience. So again, you come right to the welcome screen, you click on set up your Jack KVM. Now you can choose your local authentication method. You can either do password protected or no password, your call. I would probably always go with a password even if it was local. Um, so what we'll do is I'll just go through and I will add a password. So you just set it up, any other password system. See if I got that right. And there we go. All right, and here you go. You just jump right in and you instantly see the display on the computer this is hooked up to. Now, the machine I plugged this into is running TrueNAS. And so what you can see is the basic TrueNAS console and you can just interact with it just like you have the keyboard, mouse and display like you were sitting right there. Now, like I said in the intro, this is a perfect product if you have a device that's hard to reach. For me, these are sitting in a closet where I don't have a monitor and keyboard around. And so anytime I wanna get into the console like this or install a new OS or get into the BIOS, I end up hauling one in and just, you know, squatting on the floor, sitting on my knees, trying to get all this sorted out. And it's really, it's really terrible. And so this uh, has made that much easier, but I'll just walk you through the interface. Obviously you can see right here, I have the true NAS shell. You have commands, there's a virtual keyboard. If you wanna go down that route, you can set up wake on LAN, you can paste text in right from your uh, clipboard. And then over here, you can see your connection stats. If we jump into settings, so just walk you through the settings you have here. You can uh, check for updates on the KVM device and it will just download those and install them. Configure a little bit about the, uh, the mouse, streaming quality on the video, hardware options. And so you can see things like the display brightness, dim display, turn it off after 30 minutes. One thing I have found actually is this device can get quite warm. And so uh, it is nice when the device, you know, turns off its screen after a little bit. And you can see the type of USB devices you want to emulate on the local computer. If you don't want the full mouse and mouse storage, you can just go keyboard only or customize it. If you had set up a password, you can remove it here or change it. Now, I believe this Jack KVM cloud will allow you to access this remotely. So outside your home network. I have not tried this at all. 
And there's probably a whole set of other ways to do this. I would guess maybe using something like TailScale, I'm just guessing, would allow you to get remote access, but I haven't tried setting it up, so we'll leave that for another time. Of course, you can set the appearance and there is a developer only mode. So I just fired up another Jet KVM I have on my Dell uh, XD370 server, which is one of my older large rack mount servers. And I wanna show you why I love the Jet KVM device. And so what you can see here, and I gotta catch this thing as it goes, and then I'll explain why this is so great. All right, so as I was saying, so this, uh, as you can see, this PowerEdge R730 XD server, big, it's old, and it's actually really hard to get a monitor and keyboard connected to because the, the USB, there's VGA, and then the USB ports don't all work, so you have to have one connection in the front and the back, and it, it is in an incredibly inconvenient location in my rack, so I rarely want to touch anything on it. Now, these particular servers have an onboard management computer called an iDRAC. The iDRAC actually has a separate network interface, IP address, and that's the whole point of it. You can do manage uh, remote management of the server using the iDRAC. You can even power it on and off using that. And I thought that would be really great because I don't like leaving the server running all the time. Now, the reality is I got this server on eBay. It's got to be at least 10 years old. The iDRAC does not work for me no matter what I do. In fact, I've gotten it working a couple times where I'm able to log in. When it does work, it's so incredibly slow, it's not even worth bothering with. So I've just given up on it. And what that meant was I never, um, it was when I needed to go into the BIOS or I wanted to like install a new OS, I just didn't do it because I didn't feel like dragging all the parts into this closet and getting it all wired up just to do a couple of changes. And where this really became a problem recently was I upgraded my home network to uh, 10 gigabit. Well, I added a 10 gigabit switch and I wanted to make sure this machine, which is my Proxmox host, was on the 10 gigabit network as well. And this machine happens to have 10 gigabit networks built in. I think it has four onboard network controllers and I'll show you that in a second. But I could not get the 10 gigabit networks working and so I needed to come in here into the system setup and figure all that out and I just, Never bothered because I couldn't get into the iDRAC and I didn't feel like dragging all the parts into the closet. And this is where Jet K KVM came in and was super helpful. So you can see with Jet KVM, here I am. I got into the BIOS. This is the system setup and I'm actually gonna go right into the BIOS and I'll show you something. So I was able to go in here. You can look at all the system information on this thing. I'll just show you. There you go. So that was the BIOS, but I can come in here and go into device settings. And here you can see all the integrated controllers. It obviously has a RAID controller built in, but I was trying to get 10 gigabit uh, networking working. You can see it has two integrated 10, 10G controllers, two regular ones, and actually additional uh, controllers in these slots. So I was able to go in, make sure all these were configured correctly. Again, without hauling monitors and keyboards out of the closet, confirm these were turned on and enabled. I could confirm if they were connected or disconnected all from this you know, wonderful Jet KVM interface. Then I was able to get it working in Proxmox. And so this was, for me, this was a fantastic time savings, just made a lot of things easier. So now I wanna show you one other amazing feature. I think for most people, they're not gonna be spending a whole ton of time playing around with BIOS like I just showed you on that server. Where this is really useful, I think, in many home lab cases is when you're playing around with different operating systems and you just want to grab an ISO and install it on the machine. Again, Jet KVM makes this super simple. You don't even need uh, to make a bootable USB. What you can do is, and I came back to my other Jet KVM device, which I showed you earlier, which is running TrueNAS, you can just go into this virtual media section. And what this is going to allow you to do is over the Jet KVM, basically mount an ISO and boot from it. And that I, is just blows me away. I love it. Now, uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, we'll, I'll show you an add new media. You can see most of them are experimental at this point. Remember, this is a Kickstarter project, so work is still going on. Now, the easiest way and what they recommend on their documents, why, which I will show you right here, is using the storage mount. And so storage mount allows you to mount previously uploaded images from the Jet KVM storage to the remote host. This is the fastest way blah, 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 because basically you're reading the image right off the Jet KVM storage. Of course, the only downside is that you need to upload the image to the Jet KVM before you can mount it. So I don't feel like going and picking that thing up and putting an image on it. So why don't we try a more interesting way? I have tried this and it worked. So imagine now I'm tired of TrueNAS and you're like, hey, I just want to install Ubuntu on it. 
So they have this URL mount. So click OK and check this out. So you can mount an image from a URL. What you could imagine, maybe you have a, a server locally on your network with a bunch of uh, images that you want would be one way to do it. That's actually what I was expecting to have to do when I first clicked into this. But imagine my surprise when I saw right here, they have a ton of images they already support right out of the box. And so it knows uh, the location of the Ubuntu image and you can just select this, right? And you can mount the URL. Great, so now that is mounted onto this device via the Jack KVM. So now if what I do is if I reboot the device, I will be able to boot from that ISO and install it onto this machine. I'm gonna show you that right now. So we're in TrueNAS. I'm not gonna blow away my TrueNAS installation but I will show you this works. So I'll do a reboot. And what I'm gonna do is when this thing reboots, I'm gonna just jump into the BIOS and confirm the boot device. And we should see that in the BIOS, basically the virtual URL mount. Okay, the machine restarted and we will jump into the BIOS. All right, and we are into the BIOS. And so remember, we use this virtual media option up here to mount, let's just take a look at that, streaming from URL, so yep. That is in there. So let's go over to the boot screen and see what it shows. So check that out. So right here in boot option one, it says Debian. I don't know why it says Debian. Um, in boot option four, oh, I know, that's my bad. Debian is uh, the Proxmox, so my mistake. But you can see down here in boot option four is the Jet KVM virtual media. So that's the one we want. So I'm actually gonna move this up so you can see what happens. So I will do the Jet KVM virtual media. We'll make that our first boot option and we'll reboot. Okay, look at that. So we rebooted, we booted from the virtual media we installed and we're streaming from the URL of Ubuntu. And here we go, we can do try or install Ubuntu. So I will just select that. And this is amazing. So basically we have this virtual ISO, we're streaming directly from the Ubuntu release site. Now I've done this one time before, and this is where things can take a very long time. And so I'm gonna go away and not make you watch this because I think it could take 10 or 15 minutes to download and stream this entire ISO. But this is just something to keep in mind that if this is something you're going to be doing regularly, you might just wanna load the ISO directly onto the Jet KVM device or you may wanna host it locally on your network so it streams faster. But we'll go off and we will let this finish its download and run and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes back and, and if all goes well, we'll have Ubuntu running. And there we go, Ubuntu is up and running. And I am not gonna lie, that definitely took a while. Probably took 15 minutes and that could have been because my network connection, but it did work. So think about that. We mounted this media virtually, streaming directly from the releases of Ubuntu, and we were able to boot from that, get into the desktop, and now from here, of course I could use it, or we can go ahead and install it. And this was the desktop version, which is weighing in at six gigabytes. So pretty hefty to stream that. I'm sure if you were inst installing the server version, which is much smaller, it would be quicker. But again, it just shows you what the Jet KVM is capable of. Now, before we wrap this up, let me show you how to get one. Now, as of this recording, the Jet KVM is still a Kickstarter project. You can go to jetkvm.com to learn all about it. But if you want to order one, you can. it'll take you over to the Kickstarter side of things and you can go through the project backing. So when I did it, I ordered two of them and it probably took a month or two to get mine. I wasn't particularly early into it, but you know, this is how you do it today. And you can see, here you go, $69 for one, which I think is, is a very reasonable price. But summing this up, I, I think it's an amazing little piece of hardware. And if you are running a home lab with a couple machines, especially if they are difficult to access, this is, it's a life changer. It just makes it so easy to connect to these machines, manage them, install different operating systems, et cetera. So easy $69, in my opinion, great addition to your home lab. Do you need more than one? That really depends. If it's easy for you to get into that location and move them around and you're not going to be doing it very often, probably not worth picking up more than one of them. You can just switch it to another computer when you need it. I picked up two just to kind of learn what the experience was like and connect it to different machines. But realistically, since all of my machines are sitting in the same closet, I only needed one. Something to consider as you move forward with this, if it's something you want to do. But uh, there you go. If you grabbed one, I'd love to know what you think of it. Leave the comments down below and we'll see you next time.